A company founded in 2019 that makes vodka and hand sanitizer is dreaming big. Mars Big. Here are its plans. Air Company, a New York City-based startup that turns carbon dioxide into renewable products, has released concept images showing what a refueling station for rockets on Mars could look like. The renderings show fuel storage tanks and a rocket return launch pad, as well as astronauts and a rover. Air Company last week announced plans to create rocket fuel from carbon dioxide. Such a technology would be vital for a sustainable habitat on the Red Planet. It would also greatly reduce the carbon footprint of space exploration on Earth. The idea is not as far-fetched as it seems. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk aims to send human pioneers to Mars in 2024 and build a fully functioning settlement there by 2050. And Air Company has already received two awards and a grant from NASA for its work on carbon conversion technology. The firm says it has developed a working prototype that would take water from Mars's ice deposits and carbon dioxide from its atmosphere to produce liquid oxygen and liquid methane. In interviews with Fast Company and Inverse, company officials say they hope to work with industry players such as SpaceX and Blue Origin to deploy the technology on a space station or Mars in the near future. Up next, we look at how Elon Musk's permanent human settlement on Mars would be built. And did you know that scientists recently found a series of lakes on Mars? SpaceX's famous CEO, Elon Musk, plans to have established a functioning city on Mars by 2050. And here's how he plans to do it. Mars and Earth align every two years, making the time before these alignment periods the obvious launch windows for missions to Mars. Musk said in various news conferences that he plans to send two unmanned SpaceX starships to Mars during the next launch window, which would be in 2022. These first two autonomous cargo-carrying spacecraft will carry up to 100 tons of power, mining, and life support equipment. If this mission is successful, the plan is to use the next launch window in 2024 to send two starships with human pioneers and another two cargo-carrying starships. Musk said this first human mission would not be relaxing at all, as all future missions would depend on the success of what these pioneers can accomplish. These first Mars pioneers would have to deploy all the hardware, establish temporary survival shelters, and set up a rocket fuel production factory. Establishing this rocket fuel factory would be difficult under the harsh conditions, but it would be crucial as it is the only guarantee for the astronauts to return home alive. The factory would use Mars's frozen water and the carbon dioxide molecules that dominate the planet's very thin atmosphere to create methane and liquid oxygen, aka rocket fuel. If this very vital first human mission is successful, the next step would be to build more permanent habitats, greenhouses, and life support systems. After that, the plan is to focus on growth and rapid expansion from a village to a town to a full Martian city and eventually to multiple Martian cities. 2026 should then see the launch of a large number of human-carrying starships. Soon after that, Musk envisions seeing thousands of starships with thousands of people launched to Mars during every launch window. The surface of Mars is bone dry and seemingly devoid of life. But experts have long speculated that life could exist on Mars in water under the surface. In 2018, they found evidence of one lake at the Martian South Pole. Now, a new study has found an entire cluster of lakes. Here is what they discovered. Scientists have found a network of salty liquid water lakes on Mars beneath the planet's South Pole, according to new research published Monday in the journal Nature Astronomy. An international team examined radar data from MARSIS, short for Mars Advanced Radar for Subsurface and Ionosphere Sounding. This instrument on the Mars Express orbiter bounces radio waves off the surface and measures their echoes to image geological structures. Two years ago, these investigations revealed a subglacial lake 1.5 kilometers below the surface. The lake is in a region called Uhimi Scopoli near the Red Planet South Pole and measures about 20 kilometers across. Further investigations and analysis of new data from Mars Express have found three additional salty lakes, each a few kilometers wide. Because Mars lacks a substantial 
central atmosphere, the resulting low pressure on the planet's surface makes it impossible for liquid water to form. But the planet had seas and lakes billions of years ago, and liquid water could still exist under the surface. This water would likely be saturated with salts, which would keep it liquid at temperatures as low as 150 degrees Kelvin. Life exists in subglacial lakes on Earth, like Lake Vostok in Antarctica, so these Martian lakes could harbor remnants of life that evolved when the planet had a more hospitable climate and liquid water on the surface. This new study comes just a few weeks after scientists reported finding potential signs of life in the clouds of Venus. Astronomers have speculated for decades that life could exist in the clouds of Venus. Now, a shocking discovery is making scientists take this idea very, very seriously. Here is what they found. In an experiment made from pure curiosity, scientists from Cardiff University, the University of Manchester, and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology scanned the clouds of Venus and detected phosphine, a gas that could be a sign of life. The findings were published in the journal Nature Astronomy. Venus is about the size and the same mass as Earth. Its diameter is 12,104 kilometers. Earth's is 12,756 kilometers. Unlike Earth and all the other planets in the solar system except Uranus, Venus rotates from east to west, and it rotates on its axis very slowly. A day on Venus lasts 243 Earth days. Venus is also the hottest planet in the solar system. A runaway greenhouse gas effect makes surface temperatures hot enough to melt lead, with an atmospheric surface pressure 90 times greater than that on Earth. But high up in its atmosphere, there's a spot that is neither too hot nor too cold for life. To make their discovery, the scientists used the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope in Hawaii. They were shocked when they found hints of phosphine in Venus's spectrum. The team later confirmed the detection using the more sensitive ALMA Observatory in Chile. Phosphine is a biosignature gas. On Earth, it's made by microbes that thrive without oxygen. Other processes that could create phosphine on Venus, volcanoes, lightning, sunlight, or minerals blown up from the surface, would only account for a maximum of one ten thousandth of the amount detected. In a recent paper led by astronomer Sarah Seeger at MIT, the authors note there is a sweet spot 40 to 60 kilometers up in the clouds above Venus. They hypothesized that microbes could live there, drying up as they fall to the lower atmosphere, and then rehydrating as they return to the cloud layer by upward diffusion. In a statement, Jane Greaves, the lead researcher on the phosphine discovery from Cardiff University, said, This was an experiment made out of pure curiosity. I thought we'd just be able to rule out extreme scenarios, like the clouds being stuffed full of organisms. When we got the first hints of phosphine in Venus's spectrum, it was a shock. Of course, this is not definitive proof that life exists on Venus. In an opinion piece on CNN, Sarah Seeger from MIT wrote her takeaway is that it indicates there is something highly unusual going on to produce phosphine, either some completely unknown chemistry or possibly some kind of microbial type life. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.